was my mother. Tara Jones is a filmmaker who grew up in Vancouver and now makes her home in Montreal. And this is her very first feature-length film. It's getting a lot of attention, and there are several reasons why. Well, first of all, it has a pretty catchy title. The year Dolly Parton was my mom kind of makes you say, huh, come again? Furthermore, the film stars an absolutely charming and unaffected Vancouver actress called Julia Stone. She blew me away. She beat out loads of other young actors to get this part. It's a film about growing up, about finding yourself and finding your voice. And it has a special guest appearance by Dolly Parton herself, who gave her blessing to the film and even recorded a song for the soundtrack. Filmmaker Tara Johns dropped by the studio for a chat this week, and I asked her about the origins of the idea for this film. I just had this flash of a mother and daughter in a car traveling somewhere and we didn't know where they were going. But we sensed that there was some, you know, heavy duty emotion um, going on and um, abstract conversation and stuff. And then we would learn that the mom was taking her daughter to meet her real mother for the first time. And um, so that was a premise that I was working on. And um, while I was kind of all channels open, um, I heard a radio interview with Dolly Parton, a nice long form interview. And um, it was the first time that I ever really listened to the woman, you know, under the boobs and the hair and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was struck by what an incredible um, role model she would have been, you know, and especially in the 60s and 70s, you, you wouldn't know it, but I mean, she really blazed a lot of trails for female artists, for women in general, but she built an empire. Um, as one of your characters said, she's a, like a real businessman, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's a, yeah, she proves you can be an incredible businessman and still stay every inch a woman. Um, and, uh, yeah, and that's her. And she's really, you know, she, I was just struck at what a paradox, you know, she was and how, you know, she was this hyper-feminine, you know, image on the outside and this so intensely authentic, strong, powerful, very much her own person on the inside. And you just need to just scratch the surface a little bit and you'd find the real stuff underneath. So um, that kind of wrapped up with my idea of the mother and the daughter and the and the biological mother and the and the road trip. And um, but then there was another part of my life that kind of came in to seal the deal. Um, that was uh, when I was uh, growing up, I was very proud of the fact that my mom had gone to school with Joni Mitchell because that kind of, you know, brought one, me a little <laughs> one, degree of separation. one degree of separation from you know celebrity and um and uh i i did learn like right around that tender age of 11 or 12 that um joni mitchell had had a daughter born in the same year the same month as me and so my little you know imagination started you know running away with that and um i for a while convinced myself that i might be joni mitchell's real daughter that she had given me to her to my mom to raise and um and that you know secretly underneath my or exterior I was actually something special so um, all that kind of combined um, together to, to really you know create this this uh, the idea of the year Dolly Parton was my mom and um, and the coming-of-age story between a mother and daughter kind of spun out from there now looking around and and coming up with the idea of an Dolly Parton then you've got another hurdle to overcome and that's involving Dolly Parton somehow in this yeah I seem to have a talent for creating like you know Complexity. huge, huge channel challenges for myself um, yeah no it was I mean sort of implicit in you know in that in that idea that I would um, have at one point to um, get her blessing um, not only that but I also got it in my head that I wanted to have her music in the film that was very important to me and um, and I wanted her to play a role in the film so to speak um, so that yeah that was all kind of built in from day one and um, I knew that I couldn't just you know pick up the phone and you know hi it's Tara from Canada uh, uh, I got a great idea do you want to get on board so I knew that you know my first my first real um, job was to write a killer script and if I could do that, um, then I would worry about how to get it to her. And um, if I got it to her, then I just, I kept believing that um, she would be the kind of person that would um, open her heart and, and, um, and get on board. And she, she turned out to be that very person. 
And then you ended up working with her yes. in, the, in a studio. Yes, I did. Yeah, very much like this one almost. It was, uh, it was uh, um, definitely the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Because she, um, she, when she did receive my script like two and a half years later um, from the original idea, um, I, got, I got my script to her and um, I received a fax about three weeks later. A fax? Yeah. Yeah, she's uh, she's quite quite notorious. In fact, I think a lot of people in Nashville co um, communicate through fax still. Yeah, it's it's, it's sort of like a, a very kind of an archaic way, but I mean it, it's kind of it works for them. So um, so yeah, I received a beautiful letter from Dolly Parton with her letterhead, her signatures, letterhead on the top of the fax. Did you dance around the room? At oh, that point? well, I cried for like two days straight. Like my face just leaked <laughs> for two days because I was just thrilled. I just knew that you know that that letter that started out so beautifully and just ended up saying that you know she would be privileged and honored to give me everything I'd asked for I was um yeah I just knew that you know I pretty much had the key to the city and um so then yeah when I did complete the 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 actual shooting of the film it was time to to go down to Nashville and um and meet Dolly Barton and uh and work with her I I, I had an hour with her in studio and was she as nice to work with in person as she was on her facts? She's Tennessee. incredible. Yeah. yeah, no, she was really incredible. She came into the studio. We had, like I said, an hour. She had other gigs booked that day. But um, she uh, she came in with just uh, one woman, not, not an entourage or anything, just her best friend from grade six basically and and uh and really low-key and we just talked about the script a little bit she said she really loved the writing and coming from her such an incredible writer that was a thrill and um and then she said so what do you want from me and i said <laughs> well i just want you to be yourself you know i just want dolly parton she's like well you know i like to be directed so um please direct me and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> and I was pretty nervous for the first take or two, but then uh, we all settled down, and um, she, you know, she she was great. I mean, she was Dolly Parton and then some, and um, and uh, then we finished, and she she had an hour, so she, the remainder of the time she just hung out with us and shot the breeze. Nice. Yeah. She did ask me, however, in the first letter, she asked me um, if I wouldn't mind taking out some of the swear words particular swear words that she wasn't comfortable with. Not that she hasn't said a few curse words, she said, in her, you know, in her time, but um, her fan, you know, her audience is built on families, and her businesses are family-oriented and stuff, so she was very, she wanted to be careful with that. So curse words that you had her saying, or the other characters? No, not her. Oh, right. my gosh, no. 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 Actually, I did, I, I did have, um, uh, as, yeah, in the end, I did have her say "damn," and and uh, she changed it. She in the in the recording of it, she changed it to "dang." <laughs> Why were you interested in in telling a story about, well, a, a story about I guess coming of age, about finding identity, finding voice? What 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 about that kind of a story appeals to you? Well, I guess because I live it, you know, on a daily basis, I'm very, um, I'm still, as much as, you know, I, I, I can identify with the, with the mother um, in, in my story, um, I can identify with most of the women in, in the story, but um, I also identify yeah. with the little girl. I still, you know, I still to this day feel like I'm, you know, still searching for who I'm going to be when I grow up. You do explore so many different female roles and, and interactions in the film. There's the, the neighbor who's that outgoing, earthy hairdresser right. <laughs> and uh, you know, super mom. And then there's there's uh, the mother, in this case, who is reserved and, and, and frightened of change. Mm -hmm. And then the girls, the whole nasty, nasty interaction between 11 and 12-year-old girls that so many of us can identify with. Right. Yeah, it's, it's quite, a, quite a spectrum. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's certainly, I, I would say more, you know, that I kind of, I touched on, I touched on a fair amount of um, milestones, I suppose, in, you know, in girlhood and, and, and womanhood. Certainly not, not, you know, didn't explore much, you know, it all in depth, but um, I think it's a, a fair enough reflection of, of my experience and, you know, um, my peers. And that time and place. And the time and place, absolutely. What's it like for you to see this? now all together when you sit back after all these years mm -hmm. of, of contemplating and all the work that's gone into it your first feature film yeah well it's pretty thrilling I mean it depends on the day I've seen it so many times <laughs> that I you know I, I have a different experience every single time um but I think you know ultimately I marvel at how it's become its own thing um how it's now 
I mean, you know, we can't help but fall into that cliche of, you know, giving birth and, you know, it's a, suddenly it's no longer part of your being. It sits out in the world on its own and, and it is exactly what it's supposed to be. That young actress, Julia.